Incapacitated but still willing to govern, Algerian President Abdelaziz Bouteflika has entered months of speculation, announcing he will run for fourth term. But what is the real state of his health? And what does the ongoing uncertainty mean for Algeria? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Mike Hanna. Abdelaziz Bouteflika will run for re-election. This despite not publicly addressing Algerians for three years. The 76-year-old had a stroke last year and critics say he is still too ill to govern. But Prime Minister Abdel Malek Selal, who announced the candidacy, says Bouteflika is more than capable. Mr. Abdelaziz Bouteflika, actual President of the Republic, Va se présenter aux élections présidentielles du 17 avril. Mr. Abdelaziz Bouteflika, President of Algeria, will stand as a candidate for the presidential elections of April 17th. He has enough time until the 3rd of March to provide the necessary legal documents and signatures. You have spoken about the condition of his health. I've already said clearly that he enjoys all his intellectual capacities. He has all the necessary experience to rule over the country. At the young age of 26, Bouteflika was the country's foreign minister, earning himself the title the dandy diplomat. But persistent allegations of corruption hindered his rise to a higher position. He had to wait two decades with seven years in exile and a civil war before he became president. He was seen as protecting a largely secular political system and in 1999, backed by the country's powerful military, he finally took office as Algeria's leader. Western powers credited Bouteflika for introducing political reform, but his domestic opponents accused him of failing to fulfill his promises. Well, for more on this, I'm joined by our guests. In Doha, Amel Bubaker, a visiting fellow at the Brookings Doha Center and a specialist on North African policies and Saad Jeba, international lawyer and political analyst. And joining us on the line from Algiers, Ishmael Tabash, a professor of international relations at Algiers University and a former leading member of the National Liberation Front. Thank you all very much for joining us. Let's begin in Algiers with Ishmael Tabash. What has been the reaction among Algerians to the news that the president will stand again? At the people's level uh, has been uh, largely positive for many, uh, for various reasons. I will mention only one or two or three of them. One is the people are keen to see a continuity of stable and peaceful uh, Algeria. And this achievement has been positively maintained by the FIFA. The other thing is social economy. I think the FIFA has provided a social economy that covered 70% of the, of the new people, uh, employment and uh, 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 the, the small uh, enterprises, etc. So uh, the other thing, uh, other candidates are not, uh, are not really alternatives. Firstly, the people whom they talk about are four candidates have been absent from the political scene for 10 or 15 years. So the country will be convincing for the Algerian people. Well, we'll, so we'll talk about the now, possible candidates in a moment, Ishmael Dabash, if I, if I may. But I want to pick up on the first part of your statement there and speak to Saad Jabbar here, the um, claim that the announcement means that the country will be more secure, feel more secure. Do you feel that this is the case? Well, totalitarian and dictatorial regimes they always threaten that if they go, security will go. This is an old argument, and I don't believe that smile is correct to say that many people welcome the uh, announcement, not because Bouteflika is uh, worse than the others. However, it shows that the regime was already a sick regime for 22 years. They were promising 
uh, democracy, they were promising freedoms, they were promising everything, but all they did, they created a facade or appearances of democracy, yet the regime remains a totalitarian one. However, the problem now, the problem now is, this is a for, for the first time, for the last 22 years, where you have a really an open split between the, um, some you know, factions of the regime and Bouteflika's clan. This is unheard of. It used to exist, but the regime always relied on a collective um, decisions regarding candidature. It's the regime which always, was that collectivity conclave, which always choose the president beforehand. They choose the candidate who should win, and they choose the candidates, candidates who should lose, and no one else could take part. So what is strange is that there is no factional, open factional fi fighting. However, it is a fighting before the old regime or of a collectivity of the decision makers, military intelligence, and some people who are linked to them, to, and, 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 and another uh, regime which is emerging through Bouteflika, who wanted to be not three quarters of president, but he wanted to be a president with all the powers, not because he's going to create a civil state as it was claimed but to create and uh, he will might be civilian but he, he will keep retain the same vessels of a totalitarian regime so it's bad news for algeria it's good news for the people this is the first time the people might have a chance to push both sides out of you know the political arena well let me go to amal babakir with with that particular point um do you think that if indeed there are splits within the ruling powers in that society that he is standing in an attempt to create unity to prevent these splits? Unity, certainly not, but consensus, yes, of course. And that's exa the exact challenge of that transition the, this time. I would say that what has helped the regime to survive in 99 to, to uh, organize a transition from the civil war, namely a uh, transitional civilian presidential facade, it's now what threatens it. I mean, this civilian, this hyper presidency that has been built for the past 15 years now threatens the survival of the regime because they have created their own obstacle, actually. I mean, how do you continue to rule on uh, over Algeria on the base of an hyper presidential system without the hyper president who is sick and who may not be able to uh, bring his first mandate or at least to finish it? So that's really the contradiction of the regime now and there's also another important uh, uh, thing that uh, the regime will have to keep in mind in organizing an acceptable transition uh, for this false mandate is that first the transition should be uh, acceptable to international partners of course so any kind of violence should be banned uh, but more importantly it should uh, create a new architecture that is being capable capable to redistribute power between the various clans why keeping control on the political, economic, uh, security management of the country. And that's a, a complicated equation. Well, let's go to Ishmael uh, Dabash on these particular points. We've heard there the allegation that there are divisions within those who have been governing and ruling Algiers. Do you believe that there's any truth to that type of claim, that we are seeing public divisions now among those who are holding power? First, I would like to say that I'm talking as a professor who is an observer of the political field. Really, we have to see how the state of Algeria works. So, the people, the opposition, they are expressing themselves in a very wishful thinking because they have been overthrown or they have been. To be presented at the uh, uh, democratic level, whether at the parliament or other local council, etc. Well, we seem to be losing that particular signal, but what we did hear there before we lost uh, the telephone connection to Algiers, uh, Saad Jabal, was um, saying that you are not aware of the real feelings of the Algerian people, that there is, uh, we heard the uh, contention that his presence, that the president's decision to stand has been welcomed by the majority of the people there. Your view? Well, this is a problem. Smain Debesh has been a member of the FLN and uh, he <laughs> wished to become uh, one of the leading politicians, but so far he failed. And uh, 
he would like to say that, wouldn't he? I mean, we are living in a world. Algeria is going through a very, very critical, critical stage because the regime maintains security so far. But we could see that split starting two and a half years ago. The intelligence services at the highest level, they didn't want Bouteflika to stand the third term, fourth term, even before when he fell ill, because he could see, they could see that there was a danger of his acts or a danger to the status quo status quo anti. They wanted to retain the old regime and Bouteflika's behavior, Bouteflika's way, Bouteflika's relations and so on. He created some situations where he would mess it up for, for you know for, for them and they feared that that behavior might lead the people to go to the streets and the army might not shoot other crowds and it will happen. Exactly what happened in Ukraine now without a good parliament. So they fear that the, uh, the continuation of Bouteflika might cause them real problems which they cannot deal with and they cannot survive any consequent events. However, I think this is the first time where I could see that uh, Algeria is open to all possibilities or eventualities now. The, you know, the anti-Bouteflika uh, people who wanted to retain the old state quo might stir some troubles in the streets, either to prevent him from going forward and standing as a candidature, or they will create problems for him even before the presidential elections take before the date of the presidential election or anything could happen Abu Tafrika has been there for 15 years to say that he didn't he helped reform the country it is not true he has opened he has closed the political the scene for everyone now you don't have credible political institutions like parties and so they are all even the head of the FLN he said the intelligence service infiltrated or they were toppling or interfering with political parties with the judiciary and with the media and it is it was true well, well I want to pick up on that particular point there uh, with you Amal Babakar the, the issue that you raised about the intelligence services last month two very senior generals from the DGS were fired by the government a colonel as well now this is virtually unprecedented is this part, do you believe, of, of, of the divisions that are now manifesting themselves? I think, you know, if you look back at what, how the re regime, uh, the Algerian regime has consolidated itself so far, you will see that it has always used crises to restructure itself, especially in the security area. So I would suggest that this move is only a way to uh, restructure security in new areas. So now we are going to give the impression, the feeling that security forces are stepping back and that we are going to a real uh, transitional process, whatever, maybe with the intervention of a candidate like Hamaroj, for example, who will be the kind of constitutional candidate. But I think it's not a problem. I mean, this crisis is not a problem. On the contrary, they always have used crisis to restructure themselves. If you think about what happened in 92, for example, they encouraged the feast, the Islamic Salvation Front. They let him grow, and then they intervened, saying that they will be the only uh, uh, the only uh, institution capable to, in to maintain stability. And it's ma possible that they're going to do the same thing with Bouteflika. And and this crisis really is not an obstacle for them, uh, even with Bouteflika or without Bouteflika. And I would just like to comment on the real feelings of the Algerian people. Well, at least there are two things that that do not work anymore with Alger towards Algerian people. The legitimacy of the Algerian regime does not, work, does not work anymore towards Algerian people in two arenas. First, security. I mean, that's quite paradoxical. People have accepted to not display uh, politics publicly or to take the streets, because it's forbidden still in Algeria, uh, in the name of the consensus, in the name of not bringing fitna, in the name of not bringing chaos to the society. But since the, the power, the regime has not been able to ensure real security uh, still since criminality is on the rise, since uh, terrorism is still ongoing. I mean, this legitimacy is declining. The second legitimacy is about the entire redistribution. I mean, for the past three years, every analyst has been saying that, you know, uh, Arab Spring is not hitting Algeria because the power has the, 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 the strength and the capability to bury social peace. That's not true. Social peace doesn't bring stability. On the contrary, uh, the sorry the rent actually encourage more street protests because the more you give the more people are willing to take so even this rental legitimacy is not sustainable anymore towards the people well I'll pick up on that issue of security in a moment but first let's just step back a little bit and take a look at the timeline you mentioned uh, 1991 Algeria's history has been marred by political instability and violence 
A bloody war saw it gain independence from France in 1962, but it was a war that left more than a million people dead. In 1989, a ban of political parties was lifted and the Islamic Salvation Front was formed. A year later, it looked certain to win the parliamentary elections, but in 1992, the military intervened, dissolving parliament. The move sparked a conflict that became known as Algeria's Dirty War. More than 150,000 people were killed and 6,000 civilians simply disappeared. In 2007, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb stepped up its offensive in the country. The worst attack came early last year during a four-day siege at a remote gas complex. Dozens were killed. Well, this brings us to that issue of security. How great a threat, Saad Jabbar, are the religious-based groups, the militants who are now operating increasingly brazenly, it would appear? Well, let me tell you one thing. The Islamic groups which were created supposedly because uh, or the start of their actions within Algeria against civilians and so on, they were attributed to the Islamic party which was banned. But we discovered that those groups were infiltrated by the security services and the Algerian military played their hand very well in encouraging the, you know, the young people to join those groups then dismantle them. And they showed the outside world that they were fighting terrorism, therefore don't talk about dialogue with the political the band, political party, or any other, in fact, uh, politicians who wanted really Algeria to effect a transition towards demo democracy. Are you saying that basically the Basi militants were uh, yeah. tarred, the, uh, yeah, but the politi well, political parties no, were tarred yeah. with the militants? So when you talk about now uh, Al-Qaeda and so on, that was overplayed in many countries. We don't know the truth and how much Qaeda exists in the south of Algeria or even in the Sahel. Many people will tell you our generous and intelligent service know very well how to infiltrate those people and run them as well. So, I mean, if you talk to the French or others of the record, they will tell you that they have their own not suspicions but their own evidence. However, whenever there is violence, it helps only the regime to, 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 to stay in power. This is, this is the thing, you know, violence helps the regime since 1992. And they wish that there is always a level of fear from terrorism or level of any type of violence, especially armed violence. And as Amel said, if you go to Algeria today, many people will complain about the insecurity of normal security, the police and others, and their, you know, the highest rate of crime, the highest rate of corruption, the highest rate of disorder, the highest rate of, you know. Now, there is, when we talk about the streets of Bouteflika, they don't love him. The regime is so much hated. People are laughing at it. They don't care about the politics of the regime. Algerians are not interested in elections. They are not interested in the parties which have been recreated in the form of the regime wanted them to, to instrumentalize them to, for their own ends. There are no credible official parties, except for one party which has been like the FFS, but until now that has been marginalized. Well, well, anyway. I want to pick on that particular issue with Amal Babakur. The, the complete disarray of the opposition parties or parties that describe themselves as the opposition parties they got absolutely heavily defeated in the legislative and local elections back in 2012 there is no it would appear viable presidential candidate from the opposition is this as um, Saad Jabbar is suggesting part of a constant campaign by the regime or is it a failure on the part of the political opposition I think it's both. Actually, what was at the core of the transition in 1999 with Bouteflika was to, I mean, the regime aimed to close any kind of political ne negotiation, uh, depoliticizing the conflict or the resolution of the conflict. So actually, the opposition uh, lost also touch, ba the, 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 the touch with civil society. For many reasons, I mean, they, they were obsessed with the pouvoir, uh, they did not care about social justice anymore, especially the left and the Islamists. So the, the, there has been a disconnection, I mean, between uh, the opposition and, and, uh, and civil society. But actually, 
uh, all the security measures that we were talking about has not made uh, contestation disappear. I mean, contestation in Algeria has not disappeared. It has just changed uh, the places where it is. For example, if you go to Algeria, as it said, you will see that people do not care about reforming institutions. They do not care about democratization. They care about getting a job, having uh, their rights respected when it comes to health, education, and so on. And since uh, the regime is not negotiating at all in order to avoid accountability and to stay in this kind of impunity uh, uh, legitimacy, uh, then riots, protests, demonstrations uh, became the only way to negotiate with the power. And that's also a real challenge for whoever will be uh, the next president in and, Algeria. And, and yet, um, I apologize once again that we lost contact with Algiers, but Ishmael Dabash would have been arguing strongly at this particular point that the fact that Algiers went almost untouched by the Arab Spring, that there was no popular uprising within Algeria, that there have been a series of elections, that democracy is alive and living within that country, and that you are overstating the degree of totalitarianism, as you put it. What would be your response to that? Even the people who are of the highest power, like the head of the, or the Secretary General of the FLN, which has majority in Parliament, if we believed in majorities and they believe in the legitimacy of the leg official legitimacy, he has said exactly what I'm telling you now. Things which have been saying 20 years ago and they were taboo now, they are the discourse of the streets. When we talk about political parties are weak, there is no alternative to Bouteflika. The, re the reality or the clear reality is this. The regime has fought any political force to which may, which may threaten its existence, not as a state, but as the regime, or, to pro or from preventing any person, organizations, for becoming organically and genuinely political forces. They don't allow any party to exist easily. And all these parties you see are parties which have been tamed, allowed by the regime to exist with a mission, support the existing power. And, and yet we see, though, um, vestiges of a democracy emerging. We, the, one of those parties you refer to, the Where? Movement of Society for Peace, for example, has now called for a boycott of the presidential elections. Is that a admission of failure? Or is it perhaps a sign that people are demanding proper political process? Your view, Omar? I think they are not demanding a new kind of regime. They are simply demanding a new kind of um, or a new president, a new kind of alliance and, and deal with this president. Uh, especially if you took the example of Hamas, the Islamist party that you mentioned. I mean, the strategy of cooptation, of accepting to be co-opted uh, within the presidential alliance for more than 10 years, has cost them daily. I mean, the party split, a lot of activists resigned from the party, uh, refusing to be only a puppet in the hands of, 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 the, of the regime, of the president and the security forces. So I I think corruption is a, is a failure, actually. And that's also uh, revealing one of the key problems for the regime to renew itself now. How can you maintain facade elections that are uh, crucial for uh, the maintaining of the regime's legitimacy, uh, uh, even if it's a semi-authoritarian uh, legitimacy, while elections are meaningless, wh while uh, even the opposition and even the co-opted one is uh, not willing anymore to Well, let's to very quickly put that particular to question to Saar Jebba. Uh, how can you maintain uh, legitimacy in the face of this type of problem? Look, one thing is clear. No, the whole regime now is discredited as, as an establishment as the party, uh, including the parties which supported the status quo or the anti-status quo, even those parties now are saying we don't believe we were we have been uh, tricked into a position where we thought we were helping the existing regime at the time to maintain the unity of the state and stability. Even those, when he said there is no alternative to Bouteflika and there, no, there are no other candidates, two things. The Algerian people want to change the nature of the regime. This is a regime which is moving one from one crisis to another. Two, if the regime opens the political scene, you will find many Algerians, you mentioned Hamrush. I mean, Hamrush, although he's the son of the regime, but at, he could be a good signal that Algeria is willing to move towards, towards transition or, or moving toward, in, to a phase 
which would be a transitional period for real or genuine building up for democracy. Well, at that particular point, we've got to end this discussion. Thank you to our guests, Amal Bubakar, Saad Jabbar, and Ishmael Dabash. And thank you for watching. If you want to send your feedback by email to insidestory at aljazeera.net. Thanks again for watching. I'm Mike Hanna. Goodbye for now.